Hi, so this is Pastor Daniel and I decided to start sort of a new video series where we look at the different symbols and artwork throughout the church building and we are going to start outside. Uh, so some of this you might have known already and some of it might be a surprise. I know I was. Um, so I want to start with this entrance here. Uh, and looking above, we have the name of the church, St. John's, and then we have a whole bunch of symbols which uh, call to mind St. John himself. Uh, first of all, starting on the far left, we have a book, and on the far right, there is a scroll. Uh, and this is to remember about St. John being an evangelist, meaning he wrote the story of Jesus' life. Uh, and one of the Bible verses that come to mind for this, I think, is the very, very end of John's Gospel. This is chapter 21, verses 24 through 25. I'll let the truck go by for a second. This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them. And we know that this testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And so we got this book up here to remind us a little bit of uh, all the many works and the saving works that Jesus has done that can't be contained in all the books of the world if we were to fill the world with books. Now we get into a couple of strange ones. Uh, if we work our way to the right here, uh, here is an eagle, and that little tub that the eagle is in uh, is actually a cauldron. So why is an eagle being cooked in a cauldron? Well, according to church tradition, uh, St. John, and this is uh, John of Patmos being the one who wrote the book of Revelation as opposed to the book of the Gospel of John, uh, according to church tradition, there was an emperor uh, about uh, almost 100 years after Jesus' death and resurrection uh, named Domitian. And Domitian hated Christians. He wanted to, uh, there was widespread persecution. And the story goes that he had imprisoned uh, John and had him uh, ordered to be boiled alive in a cauldron of boiling oil. Uh, John survived miraculously, according to this story, and a frustrated Domitian did the next best thing. If he couldn't kill him, he would send him away, and he exiled him to the island of Patmos, where he uh, then wrote the book of Revelation. Uh, so that's kind of a fun, strange story. And then uh, over here, there is a chalice, and sort of wrapped around and behind the chalice is a snake. And the story, again, this is an apocryphal story, didn't make it into the Bible, and uh, just kind of an interesting, fun legend about uh, some of the saints. Uh, the story goes that St. John the Evangelist was presiding at communion, and just as he was about to drink the wine, to drink from the chalice, a snake appeared and warned him uh, that uh, enemies of the church had poisoned the cup and that he and his flock, he and his congregation were in danger and that saved their lives. Uh, so this talking snake appeared is how that story goes. Um, the last thing that I want to point out, uh, these are a little bit less odd than the boiling uh, eagle and the snake in a chalice, uh, are these cross slash uh, anchor symbols that we see over here on the pillars. There's one over here, and there's one over here. Uh, and the church has a long history of uh, using anchors as part of their symbology. Uh, think of it like you're on a boat and the waves are choppy and you are afraid of falling out. You're afraid of being cast out to who knows where in the storms of the sea. And yet we remember that Christ and his cross, that they are our anchor. They're what hold us still. They're what ground us and keep us safe. Uh, and so this has long been a symbol of hope for the church, that Jesus is our anchor uh, when life gets turbulent and stormy. Um, thank you for joining me, and we'll continue this on. Uh, every week I'll have something posted about a part of our church and these rich symbols that adorn our space. God bless.